Well, we're in the heat of summer and we all know it can be pretty hot here in the Central Valley, but many want to know exactly how hot it is on any given afternoon and the easiest spot to find that answer is your car. But can you actually trust that that temperature reading is correct? 23 BC's Leah Freeman went to find out and shows us how the environment surrounding that sensor can affect that reading. On a hot day, you want to get inside your car as quick as possible. To turn on the car? and start the air conditioning. And we all want to see how hot it actually is outside. Quick glance to the temperature reading, which reads 107 versus our Storm Shield app, which reads 102. So the question is, why is it so far off? The temperatures that we see in cars a lot of times are not accurate. Christine Riley, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, knows what it takes to find an accurate temperature reading. She says there are several factors that lead to false readings. A lot of times a car will be sitting in the sun for a really long period of time. Or they will be parked over asphalt, which absorbs more heat. It's much hotter over asphalt than it is, say, over grass. But even Riley wasn't exactly sure where the temperature sensor was located. Daniel Perez is a local automotive technician and says the temperatures could be inaccurate because of the sensor's location. The ambient sensor is right behind your grill. Or depending on the make and model of your car. Well, the sensor is right here, right behind the bumper. Protected by panels, it's not usually visible to the eye. If you're sitting in direct or parked in direct sunlight, obviously the sensor is going to read higher. If you're parked under a carport, the reading is going to be a little lower. Plus, the sensor can pick up heat from the road surface. But when you start driving the vehicle... Uh, the temperatures start dropping because the fan's pulling air through the grill and through the sensor. So don't jump to conclusions right when you turn on your car. Perez says to give it about 10 minutes of drive time. That will allow for enough airflow through the car so the sensor can fully update. Every so often, the vehicle's computer will get a, a reading from the sensor and then send it to the display. Also keep in mind that an aftermarket grill will sometimes skew the temperature sensor. This added on grill blocks the airflow partially and won't give you an updated temperature reading. While the original grill was designed for... More airflow, more open uh, space. Overall, there are just too many variables that can make the car temperature readings differ greatly from official readings at weather stations across Kern County. Those have been cited in a way that they're all equal. So there's nothing really to obstru obstruct the temperature or to sway it either too cool or too warm. Riley says that if you're going to install your own at-home weather station, there are a few criteria you'll want to keep in mind. Never put it over pavement. Make sure you're far away from trees so it's not shaded. Uh, make sure that it's about four to six feet above the ground. And make sure it's not near an air conditioner or a chimney, anything that could add heat to an area. She says to constantly keep an eye on your station. If the surrounding area changes, such as pavement being added nearby, that could sway temperatures several degrees. One thing to look for are temperature trends. Trends that can help compare your own weather readings to the official ones. Also something cool to point out is that there could be up to five temperature sensors within one car. There's mm. the one outside plus multiple inside yeah. that help regulate the temperature inside the car. Some interesting cool facts stuff. there. Yeah. So if you want to get the real reading, just trust Leia. Of course. <laughs> yes. That's the most accurate. She'll, she'll give it all. all right. <laughs>